Welcome back, everybody. I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 501. I was on site at two different practices last week. I had appointments all day to sit down with different staff members and say, hey, how can we make your job more efficient, more effective? How can we do more with less and give you the tools you need to do a better job? Most of it was SQL Server, reports and emails. Some of it was Excel spreadsheets. There's a bunch of things I can do if I can get on site at your practice. I'd love to help you. What we're going to do today is build a new kind of chart called a bubble chart. And the easiest way to explain it is to show you what I'm doing. So let's play with our diabetes data set here. And let's say I want to compare my A1C levels. So we'll drag that down. Sure, we will drag that down. And you know, I've got a bunch of different metrics here. Maybe adherence to statins is what I want to look at. So I'm going to drag those two fields. And right now I just have patient count. You know what? This is pretty small. So let's make it big so you can see once I do something to it. What I'm going to do instead of bar chart, column chart, we're going to do a scatter chart. And that's the trick. We're going to start with a scatter chart. And quite frankly, <laughs> you know, that's not all that exciting yet. This is the number in thousands. On the x-axis is A1C. The y-axis is adherence to statins. It's not telling me a thing yet. Let's say, well, maybe what I want to do is I want to see it by provider. So we'll put provider in the details section. And now I've got all these bubbles. And I think what we can do is let's filter and take some of the providers off just so that it's going to be easier to see. Let's uh, put Dr. Beard in there. And there's Dr. Clayton. So they're clearly in a couple of different places. There's Dr. Jackson there toward the middle. Salazar's over there. Let's see if we can find something like that. So now I've got five physicians, but again, this I'm probably still not doing much to impress you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add one more field, and here's where the magic comes. It's called size. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the patient ID, and this is going to let's count the patient ID. So look what Excel's doing for me. It's drawing circles that show me the size, or, or if I hover, there's 5,500 patients here. Dr. Beard also has 5,500. So does Dr. Jackson. It's amazing what happens when you use random numbers to make up data. They all end up about the same on some of this. But they have, it, what the, the size of the bubble is showing you is the number of patients. And then the x-axis is telling you the number of patients with an A1C. And these are the patients that are hearing the statins. I think if I were to do a final version of this data set, what I would do is put an average A1C, but we can do that in the meantime by doing this. Let's do an average A1C and an average number of patients who are complying. And so what I have here is Dr. Clayton, about 68% of his patients are compliant with the A1C measure and about 54% are adhering to statins. Whereas Dr. Wade's patients, a lot lower percentage are adhering to statins and a lot lower percentage also have an A1C that's meeting the practice guidelines. Does that make sense? The trick is to do other chart and scatter. And then what we're going to do to that scatter chart is we're going to put an X and a Y field here. The details are the provider I want to see. And then there's even more things you can do down here. You can do vertical multiples and horizontal multiples if you wanted to see different providers or different time frames or whatever you could play with that just like we did in the last Excel video and there are a limited amount of title and data labels things you can do to tweak this chart but the idea of being able to do a bubble chart with the, where the you can control the size with the number of patients and compare two variables is an interesting thing you can do and it's available in power view stay tuned there's a couple of more chart related things that you can only do power view charts with we'll do the next one in the next excel video thanks for watching